we're going through a very difficult stretch. You can see that we have a lot of guys who are not in good form and well, mentally they're just not where they need to be. Um, with it all, I thought we started the game okay. Um, it's a it's a really bad first goal to concede, and then you could see that that mentally hit some guys right away with their heads down. Um, we talked at halftime. Uh, we felt that we had to be a little bit more aggressive in the final part of the field, uh, get into the box, take guys on a little bit more. Um, and then we have uh, just a terrible two minutes in the second half. Uh, the first situation, uh, we make some passes in the midfield. Latif ends up losing a ball and our defensive reactions and Kenneth's ability to read the play, um, that part uh, was the factor of the second goal. And then right off the kickoff, uh, we play from back to day on over to Eddie. Eddie tries to play a ball into Sifu and it turns over. And I thought our positioning, uh, Tristan was too far wide, too high up the field off of the kickoff, which is, just not something that we do when, when we play uh, in that moment. So we, we lost our concentration and immediately gave up another goal. Uh, good goal to get to 3-1 and, and not enough of a push when at the 3-1 to see if we could really make it interesting. So a tough stretch for us. Uh, and, and again, you can just see uh, with so many guys right now, confidence, uh, mentality, and, and form, things that we've got to find the right ways to, to get back. All right, thanks, Bob. We're going to start. First question, Vince LaRosa. Vince, go ahead and unmute yourself. Bob, I want to ask you about uh, the front three today. You, you often speak about their ability to find times to be narrow and their ability to find times to be wide. It just seemed they weren't quite in sync. And I, I know Diego was trying to play make a little bit. Can you kind of comment on, on that aspect of their uh, relationship up front? Uh, I think Diego tried. He found ways to be outside. He found ways to be inside. Didn't start the game at his sharpest, but kept going, rewarded with a goal. Um, I don't think Brian had a good game. I thought the first 30 minutes of the game, his concentration, uh, I thought that in, in stretches, he was too wide and too predictable with what he was trying to do. So for, for us to be at a good level, we need Brian to play better than, than he has played of late. Uh, and then I don't think it was Brad's best game. Brad did really well in Orlando. Uh, and tonight, I don't think he was so sharp. So more than the relationships, I think you've got to get better games from guys. Uh, I think when, when all said and done, pretty good from Diego and, and, uh, and, and just okay for Brad and not good for Brian. Thanks, Vince. Next up, we have Alicia Rodriguez. Alicia, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, Bob, I wanted to ask about um, starting Danilo tonight. Um, he hadn't played in, in quite a while, and, um, and then he had to come out before halftime. Uh, I'm guessing that's because of injury, but I wanted to hear uh, why he, uh, why you decided to start him tonight in particular, and uh, why he had to come out uh, before halftime. Uh, first, we've been hoping that we could move Danilo back into it, and uh, he, he had a very good stretch of training where we were able to build up his load and uh, his play and training was quite good. So we were excited to get him back. He would have started against Salt Lake. Uh, we didn't expect that he could play 90 minutes. We were hoping for somewhere around 60. And he came off because uh, he felt his hamstring. And he is very disappointed, very frustrated. All of us feel bad for him because we've seen how hard he's worked throughout the entire time we were in Orlando. Uh, pushing every day, doing the work with uh, 
with Gavin and Daniel and Tom. And, and so tonight was, was a disappointment. I thought before he went off um, for someone who hadn't played in a long time, he was, he was playing pretty well. Thanks, Alicia. Up next, Katya. Katya, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Bob, what do you say has changed in the past week, month or so? Like, you know, for example, Galaxy and Seattle are two teams that you guys beat comfortably in, in the bubble, and now you've had two back-to-back -back losses. That's a very good question. Uh, we weren't satisfied with, with uh, how it finished in Orlando, but we still felt that we had pushed all the games. We were a threat. We scored goals. Um, you've heard me talk about some of the things that let us down in Orlando. We didn't finish out uh, a game with Portland, um, giving up a, a late goal, second phase on a corner. And then we have chances when it's 1-0 against Orlando to go to 2-0, can't take advantage, and then again, give up a, a late goal off of a corner. Uh, so we, we were disappointed because we felt that we had gone there with a really good mentality and played uh, quite well with just some things that needed to be worked on. And since we've returned, uh, There's, I think the level has slipped a little bit in training. Uh, and and it's, something, it's something different for this group, where all of a sudden it's not coming so easy. Uh, you heard me speak after the Galaxy game. We just didn't play well. Uh, and then and tonight I thought we started out okay, but when we conceded a poor goal, you could just see a little bit of the way uh, guys put their heads down. So. Uh, there's never excuses. Uh, we, we set the bar high, um, but it's still an interesting period with, with the day-to-day -day part with players because with everything that's going on in their lives and in the world, um, lately we've, we've tried everything we can to try to keep us fully engaged and, and you can just see that some of them are not. So that's the responsibility of the coaching staff to find the right ways to keep everybody going during a difficult period, both on and off the field. Thank you. Next question, Andy Diosa. Andy, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Um, along with some of the defensive issues that you have already mentioned, or whatever the case may be, is there, do you think, a bit of a disconnect with uh, Kenneth in the back, obviously? Claw out of position in the first one, bad challenge in the second goal. Is there something there that's lacking, or is it just uh, I think you've been mentioning just kind of a, a thing of getting back into the flow with everything going on? Uh, the first goal, he just got caught flat footed. So the uh, deflection it catches everybody a little by surprise. And Rui Diaz sees that he's off the line, and you know, Kenneth kind of, is right around the six, and he's he just doesn't read that, that Rui Diaz is about to hit it first time. Uh, the second one, there's a lot of space behind the defense. Our line is high. Uh, we have the ball, and, and, and as I mentioned earlier, Latif starts moving with it and ends up losing the ball, and it quickly went out uh, on our right side. And Ladero played a very good ball. Uh, I don't think that Dan and Eddie, especially Dan in this case, um, read the situation well because I think dan has got the speed that, that now – as the ball is going to Ladero, I think it was Ladero, and the ball got put in behind Dayon, it's got the speed to be able to react and, and move off of Morris earlier. And then it's Kenneth's job just to clean up behind in that situation. So uh, his decision to come late with, with Morris running on to the ball was a poor one. Thanks, Andy. Up next, we have Alex Kaminer. Alex, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, good evening, Coach. It's Alex Kaminer. It's Alex Kaminer from Fútbol Sin Códigos. Um, Coach, it's the first time that Jose Cifuente start from the study 11. How do you see the performance of him, including the goal assisted to the Thank you. Yeah, I think Sifu is growing as a player. Uh, 
Uh, he gave us solid 45 minutes when he came on versus the Galaxy. And uh, I think tonight continues to show his growth. Uh, good play to set up the goal. Uh, and so we see a young player that, that hopefully we can keep moving along. But uh, uh, tonight is not a good step. Thank you. Up next, we have Giovanni Garcia. Gio, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Bob. Um, obviously, difficult, difficult loss. Um, how far is a, tw a Twesta from coming back? I know we, we haven't seen this team in the midfield look as good with a Twesta. And can you talk about Christian Torres and making Yeah, I, 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 the last part I can't hear, Gio. Yeah. I, I heard, heard something about how far before uh, after Weston comes and, back. And I said, Christian Torres, can you talk about him making his MLS debut? Uh, Edward is, I think I said this the other day on the uh, on the, the Zoom call prior to the game, uh, that Edward is not yet back in full training. He's working on the side, uh, moving better, but still not really striking the ball completely. Uh, still not yet moving and cutting at full speed. So he's got some more work to do before he returns to full training. So I would still think that that means he's weeks away from getting back on the field. Uh, Christian, uh, we're excited to get him on the field. Uh, young player, just like uh, Tony Leon and uh, Eric Duenas. Experience now in training. And little by little, we hope to move these guys along. And tonight was a first step for him. 